Okay, people, we're back at the structure here. And you see that the pockets are all, um, it's pocketed well over there, including brick going up between a party wall, which is really good. Nothing over here, that little fracture turned out to be nothing. Um, all the joists are pretty good, except for these one, two, and three. One, two, three, was it four? Four, just spin around. Um, well, anyway, three. Let's go with this three for now. I did a strap on this one. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Because it's got the pipe in it, it's going to get reinforced. The uh, cut notches. So I did a strap for you to help you understand or visualize the forces. It's just drywall screwed on for you to help you see the profile. As you can see, the left side or identify the left side is down and the right side is kind of flat and level over to the wall. The left side is taking a pitch down towards the center and there's the fracture of it. Now, now I've had a couple of uh, contractors on this job tell me that just put wood back there. What would wood do back here guys? Nothing. It's the same exact stress inside the wood that you put here. It's, you're just moving it out to your new piece of lumber. And if your new piece of lumber is grained in that capacity, that's such as the grain running that way, it would split pretty, pretty easily back to splitting. So there you have that knowledge. Now let's go from there. So to determine how much loading is on there, I use a, a pound force gauge. And what you do is you put your your pipe or whatever you're going to do onto this one in a load cell and it will tell you your pounds force once you get it level how much weight you're actually dealing with how much of a load then you can add a little bit more of a margin to it and that way you know what you're dealing with instead of just guesstimating going well I got it back level it should work the other part of it worked this will give you a real value this is a load force gauge up to 6,000 pounds hold on okay so using a pull-out test with an anchor like this, it has ultimate failure in a 2x4, two 2x4 by four, two by four turned sideways, this grain pattern that you notice there. doesn't matter. The grain pattern matters. It's going to fail at 1825 pounds of force. The maximum load is about 1,500 pounds, and then it starts creeping out, starts pulling out. 1825 is its max before it starts, before it drops off and goes the other way. It still has plenty of, uh, at 1,500 pounds, it still has plenty of bite left in it, 325 pounds of reserve force, if you will. And just a 2 by 4 with that penetration, as you see there. Um, and again, with this grain pattern. Now, what does that just tell you? It just tells you that that grain pattern, that 2 by 4 has, that you can get that much value out of, uh, a clamp force out of it okay so now we'll I'll, I'll put one of these into this existing timber above and I'll pull it out to see what kind of bite force I have but it's not just pulling out it's more like this so it's not the same is it so this is more in shear that I'm worried about not so much in this action like that as you may observe with just a little bit of <clears throat> transition that I have to take care of, transitioning from a, 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 rigid, a rigid side here to getting it over to that side, which ultimately goes down the wall. So our transition is from that crack. From this crack, I need a bridge all the way over to there to make it act as one, behave as one. That's not going to be an easy task. Old lumber, trying it out for the first time. Um, and it's, it's, it can be made simple if I just use a steel plate. 316 steel plate, both sides sandwich it both together. There's your story. End of story, bridge it back together, and it's a significant piece of steel that you would use from there to there, putting it into the shear zones, just loading it so it goes from here, good, good eight foot or ten foot piece to there. All right? And you can sandwich it on each side. Bolt it through, clamp it up real tight, and there you have it. But this is going to give me true value, which I like to deal with sometimes. 
um, instead of guesstimating, this will give me true value upon leveling, upon loading it, um, what the actual uh, load is on each one of those beams that I'm dealing with. And at that point, I, I got no problem at all at uh, assessing what um, strut system I'm going to use <coughs> to tie it together. <coughs> what else do I have for you? What else do I have for you? Oh, so I wanted to show you this. See, if this goes on the bottom, if we put this on the bottom, underside of it, it becomes a like a, a, a bridge, if you will, from one side to the next. Now, this is just a unistrut for um, heavy duty for um, clamping things to walls, etc. It's got a little channel here, a little turned out channel on each side. It makes it more rigid. There's our, our bolts. If I use a full, that's about a half inch, a little bit, little greater. About nine sixteenths hole. If I were to do that, I would I would lose a lot of dimensional material out of the lumber. So you don't need necessarily all of that. The, the clamp force is not really needed there. You'll put it out here near the edge. And now, if it tries to go down, it puts it in shear. This being the part to shearing your whatever your um, your bolt may be. But it would be a few bolts now. You got to remember that you've got to get this where each one is rubbing against the walls here. You can't have one in the middle and then one on the edge here. The one on the edge here would be taking the load and this would be clamp force. It may help you if you can put a big washer on it and get that clamp force to work. Remember I showed you why, oh, I just showed you the clamp force of uh, that one screw. I can get 1,500 pounds on it if I, well I didn't chest this lumber yet, if I can get it to um, tighten down and figure out ultimate failure from it. And I can do that. But let's try this for sport of it. We're going to put this on the underside of the uh, beam of the floor joist and see if we can turn it into a beam with this being its strong back upside down beam from the, I'm sorry, from the underside of it. I have all, multiple other ways to attack this, including the plate, clamps. There's, there's many ways. But I wanted to have a little fun with this one because this ultimately is a big crack. I usually run across much smaller cracks. This one's got, is more of a challenge and more fun. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to get the value. All right, we'll get the. I'll get the value. I know what I'm working with, and I want to know what that can do. If that's capable of staying rigid, I need to stay rigid, and one point only. Once it's rigid across there, that's great. On the side of there, that's flat. Now you can imagine it would be at a plumb, at a plane. And it, it gets lift, lift up, and then it goes secured into the side here. And ideally, again, it transfers it over to the wall. Not ideally, it strips the wood out. See a couple of checks? It strips the wood out, and it doesn't, it doesn't hold up, or it's got uh, long-term stresses on it. This is only just a sample fun piece that you're going to see. This is not the ultimate fix. Even if it does hold it up, it's going to fail. Like there's, no, there's the belt, and I need the suspenders, right? So, if it does get it flat, I'm still going to go with the flinch plate. Think of flinch plate if you guys want to look up flinch plate. F-L-I-T-C-H. That's ultimately what's going to be made there on each one. It's simple as that, but I'm having a little fun now. I'm counting you in on the games. So, let me get my loading down. There's a jack to lift it up and get the loading. That goes on. That's going to go on the ceiling in this case. Going to invert it. Put that on the ceiling. Secure it. It takes a it takes a while to get this 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 uh, clamp system set up to do it. Um, I can also put it on the base there, and I do have an adapter that acts like a uh, uh, transfer plate to transfer to the load cell. It's it's only right there. That's the load cell. The rest. This is this is not what goes down. This goes down here, and that gives you. 6,000 pounds of determinant forces. Let's hang up on you and let's rock this. I'll, I'll give you an update. I'm going to post this video. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to people in a private room about posting your Titan videos. So if, they, if they're in agreement, then the, the Titan goes back out. All right. Thank you.